findings of a report on the top 30 U.S. ports from Descartes Datamine. My guest is Mark Segner. He is Vice President of Global Sales with Descartes Datamine. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Doing great. How about you, Robert? Excellent. And thank you so much for being with me. So let's discuss what would be uh, some of the results that came from this latest report. To start with, which countries or regions in Asia specifically have seen increases in import volumes to the U.S.? Sure. Uh, in our analysis, we've seen quite a bit of shifting import volume from Asia over the past five years. Some of the big winners here in terms of maritime volume are Vietnam and Thailand. Vietnam in particular has seen more than a hundred percent increase in TEU volume since 2016. And Thailand has seen about a 60% increase in US maritime import volume in that same time frame. There've been smaller increases also from Indonesia, South Korea, and Taiwan as well. And interestingly, uh, on the other hand, there's been an 18% decrease in imports from Japan since 2018. Mm -hmm. And China, where does China again fall into that? So China has had an interesting ride, uh, as you can imagine, you know, from 2018 to 2020, they've seen an 8% drop in volume. However, if you went back from 2016 to current, that would be a 9% increase. Mm. So it's a bit of a nuanced story with, of course, COVID in the center of it. Because it's so nuanced, maybe difficult to extract generalizations from the results, but what implications does it, what does it say to you? Does it look to you that this might actually signal a significant shift in sourcing strategy uh, by U.S. importers? Well, generally, yes. If, if we look at the data, there's obvious evidence of sourcing shifts by U.S. importers. Uh, this primarily began after the tariffs were implemented uh, by the previous administration with import volumes from China beginning to drop at the end of 2018, and then a major decline in 2019 and the first half of 2020. If we look at the, the products that have seen large reductions of imports from China, we see significant increases in imports of these products from other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> some examples that we've seen in our data would include furniture coming from Vietnam and, and tires from Thailand. Um, there, there's something of a caveat here, of course, which is COVID's impact on Chinese exports during the first quarter of 2020, which was obviously very significant. Yeah. What we've seen since has been a resurgence of those exports. Um, U.S. imports from China in the final months of 2020 and first quarter of 2021 have largely returned to pre-tariff levels and, and now maybe exceeding those levels causing bottlenecks throughout the transportation system. We certainly have seen those, but to what extent can you draw an exact parallel? And that is that the types of imported goods that have shifted to places like Vietnam and Thailand are directly those that, that had tariffs applied to them coming out of China. That is correct. There yeah. is a direct correlation between where those tariffs were levied on uh, products from China. And those were the ones that were likely to move to places such as Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this shift in any way is responsible for some of the port congestion in Southern California specifically? I mean, it would have been coming from Asia, from, other, from China anyway, and a lot of that comes into the West Coast anyway. But I'm just wondering if there's something about the shift to Southeast Asia that puts more of a pressure on Southern California ports because of the transit time. I don't think the shift from China to Southeast Asia has anything to do with significant congestion increases, mm -hmm. but demand has obviously increased for carriers and shippers um, overall. And most of that is hitting the West Coast ports because that's, those are the ports that handle most of the imports coming in from Asian countries resulting in this congestion as evidenced by the ships awaiting berths to unload outside of many of those ports. And I mean, the, the numbers explain the story. At, at yeah. one point in April, there were about 20 ships waiting to dock at the ports, down from about 40 back in February. So there's been some, some improvement. Mm -hmm. However, as a comparison, you would 
typically have anywhere from zero to three or four ships waiting in the harbor to unload. And in yeah. addition, you know, there's a, a shortage of shipping containers, meaning shippers can't get the equipment they need to ship their product. Shortage of chassis that allow truckers to carry the containers is also contributing to the problem. And, and of course, there's been a labor shortage at the ports, which um, has been due to COVID not allowing those ships to be unloaded in a timely fashion. So mm -hmm. that tied with this, you know, COVID lockdown, which yeah. sparked an enormous e-commerce boom uh, for electronics and computers and home gym equipment, you know, with this new stay at home economy helped cause the congestion. Uh, there's also been an increase in demand across much of the corporate sector as leaders are revisiting their perspective on lean supply chains that have been dominating supply chain theory over the past decade or two mm -hmm. that have caused shortages. So, you know, demand has been surging as a more robust supply chain has been deemed more important to prevent against those shortages. And, yeah. And we're also hearing that importers, specifically retailers, are trying to get a jump on this year's holiday shopping season, which normally would maybe around August, you start to see a real uptick, but we're seeing it now maybe because of their realization that they want, they don't want to be caught without getting, you know, in a situation where they don't, can't get their stuff to the shelves in time. So is that also contributory to the congestion we're seeing now? Um, I would say it probably is. That's a bit of speculation, but we have heard anecdotally from some retailers that they're trying to start early. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a balancing act there with, trying to get the manufacturing done, the shipping times. Now they have this added uncertainty of, can we get containers? Yeah. How long are the ships going to be waiting at the ports? So I'm sure that's on the minds of many of these supply chain executives for sure. So what is your speculation as to what these statistics bode for the future? Might we... On one hand, we might just go back to business as usual, everything going back to China, especially if the Biden administration does remove the tariffs that came from the Trump administration, or might we see permanent changes in port decisions for incoming imports? What, what do you think, what, what's the feeling you get from your research? Sure, I, I, think, uh, I think we're going to see somewhat of a paradigm shift in people's perspective on their supply chains. As I mentioned before, there's been such a focus on leaning out your supply chain, you know, no extra inventory, just in time perspective, Kanban systems. And I think mm -hmm. that faced an incredible test over the last year. When you think of all the, the things that impacted companies, supply chains from COVID to uh, a ship being stuck in the Suez Canal, e-commerce boom. So I think we're going to see a little bit of a regression towards uh, supply chains that maybe balance the risk of new things that may impact the supply of goods, along with the benefit, of course, of leaning them out. So mm -hmm. um, maybe a swing back of uh, pushing back against those just in time systems. Yeah. So, so importers are going to have somewhat maybe long memories this time. Maybe they aren't rushing to get back to business as usual, and maybe they're looking to the future and trying to avoid similar types of uh, situations going forward. Right. For sure. Yeah. You know, the, as supply chains have gotten longer, which they have, of course, over the past 30 years, mm -hmm. the susceptibility to this risk has become greater. And I don't think that was, taken into account um, as people continue to lean out those supply chains. So I do think we're going to have that longer memory. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you know, there are some things you can do to mitigate that, you know, shorten your supply chain, near shoring, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the closer you are to your raw materials and inputs to your own manufacturing means you're going to be less susceptible to those transportation risks across the other half of the world. And do you think, do you get a feeling that the trend in the decisions by importers as to which ports to use, whether to come in on the West Coast, Gulf Coast, East Coast, do you think, you, it has been said that there is, that people are seeing some shift toward East Coast ports as a result, you know, on a longer term basis, as a result of congestion on the West Coast. Do you get a feeling that's the case? 
Well, we've seen some of that in our data, but uh, it, it's a bit hard to be sure because there's so much volume being hung up mm-hmm. um, outside the ports. But, you know, interestingly, there was probably some of that happening when the Suez Canal was blocked by the, the Evergreen, by the ship Evergreen. And of course, if you are going to be moving your ships from going from China to the West Coast over to the East Coast, one of those options would be to go through the Suez Canal. Mm-hmm. It's not likely, I mean, you, you may go through the Panama Canal over the East Coast, but that's a longer trip. So yeah. you're, you're a little bit of, you're stuck this way or that way, you know, when mm-hmm. you have those types of- And still things. limited to ship size too. I mean, the biggest yeah, container yeah. ships still can't get through the Panama Canal, even with the addition of the third lock. Well, I'd be very interested to see the results of the next Descartes data mine report on the top 30 U.S. ports. But in the meantime, Mark, you've given us some very valuable information to kind of get us a bead on just what's going on out there with our major ports. Thanks so much, Mark Segner, for being with me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Robert.